Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to work a darned bar, an arch of knots, and rosette stitch um, on a Tenerife lace roundel. So let's get started. I have already set up my um, loom. I'm using loom number one, which has 48 holes. So if you're not using sort of one of our looms. And I have done um, just two rows of double darning at the center, um, which I've also explained in a previous video. So the next thing to do for this particular pattern, because I want to show you a couple of different um, lace stitches and reiterate some of the previous. So the first thing that we're going to do is a darned bar. Now I want this darned bar to be worked over eight threads. Basically it's weaving back and forth. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under four and then over four and come back. Okay, so I'm coming back to the direction where I previously worked. And I'm going to start pulling these in quite tightly because I want to connect them. I'm just going to repeat going over and under so that whilst it's um, I'm calling it a darned bar, it's often also called a woven bar. So if you're working this in embroidery, it'll be a woven bar. So I'm just going to do a few. You can decide yourself sort of how many you want to go up. I think that will be fine. And I'm going to end at the center so that I can come back down to the center of the medallion. Just to keep the thread neat and tidy on the back of the work. And then we're going to go up to the next four and I'm going to repeat. And then the next four next to it so that it's a group of eight threads. And again, pull in. And you can see that by pulling in, what I'm doing is I'm also creating the space um, the sort of negative space in between the stitch and the threads. So again, and at the center of the um, two groups of four, come down to the center of the medallion, hook under some threads just to keep it neat, and move along to the next. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll do this whole section because I'm sure you don't need to see um, me repeating this all the way through for the whole video. So here I've worked all of the way around um, working the darned bar or woven bar. On the last one, instead of going back down to the center, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just work a knot, okay? So your basic Tenerife knot at the top of one side, okay? Because we need to remember that this is the back, okay? And this is so that we can go up to the next section and it still appear the same as um, the others. It will lock 
that weaving into place because we don't want it to um, spread out. So I've got a nice bit of negative space in between um, each of the um, sections because I've pulled. And so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move out. And I'm going to move out and not opposite. Okay, so I'm just going to come around and not, actually I'm going to knot full groups. So whereas you've got two groups here, I'm going to come over and I'm going to knot these eight threads. So it will become more clear as I work the knots, I think. Sorry, my needle has just come on off of the thread. I'm going to work it about there. So you can see, so now I'm separating out the negative space um, with a different group of threads. Easier to do than it is to explain sometimes. And uh, in case you're wondering, I am using a Cotton Perle uh, number eight. I decided to go for the uh, pale pink because I thought in the last video the white was perhaps a bit too harsh for you to be able to see what I'm doing. I think um, a Perle cotton is quite easy for most people to get hold of, which is why I like to use it in a lot of my demonstrations. Um, I think it doesn't really matter what country you're in, you can usually get hold of a pearl or cotton, pearl or pearl or cotton. Just come in a little bit on that and pull that one up a bit further. That's better. Now, this you'll notice I'm working mostly from the center out. And you know, for, for most designs, that is what you'll do. Sometimes, as with the previous, when you have large areas of darning, it's often better to do that um, afterwards or when you have patterns that you want to specifically keep because you don't want to lose the structure of the design later by pulling in. That's going around. That went around the wrong way underneath my loom. Um, yeah, so really it, it, it depends a lot on the actual pattern itself, uh, to be honest with you, as to how you will um, work it and mixing up to work in um, from the center out doing little extra bits later is is just another way of working so i'm going to finish over the top of the last my circle isn't perfectly circular but it's not too bad it'll be more or less covered up by the next stitch stage anyway. So for the next step, I am going to work um, rosettes. Now, what are rosettes? Rosettes are a lovely little um, swirly design that goes around, weaves around. But in order to do um, the rosette, it's often a good idea to have um, a foundation. So for instance, we could work a rosette just here. We've got a knot, so we work the rosette around the knot. But what I'm gonna do is something a little bit different instead, okay? So I'm going to stop, fasten off, two options. You can either fasten off here, or you can come work up and work a series of knots. 
I think that I'm going to come up and work a series of knots so I can start a new thread later. And so I'm going to do a scalloped edge. So I'm going to go as close as I can to the uh, holding stitches, or if you're using pins, it would be as close as you can to the pins. And I'm working, as it's a scalloped edge, I'm working knotting the thread that is either side of the holding stitch or pin. Now the reason that I'm going to do this first is back to what I was saying about um, establishing where the threads lie. So by doing this we're splitting the, the pairs again and therefore spreading them out a little bit in this fan section. And that will make it a little bit more interesting when we get to doing our rosette stitch. So I'm going to carry on and do this. I get it much straighter when I'm not working underneath the camera. I can bring it closer to me to work. And it saves you having to watch me working all of these little knots all of the way around the edge. I've now come full circle on the scalloped edge. I've finished with a knot over the top of the first knot. And because I want to actually um, snip this off here, I'm going to do another knot in exactly the same place, just to give it another little extra bit of strength so that I can snip that thread end. I did have to change um, my thread, I ran out, and I did the same over here. I uh, basically ended and began again with the thread. So I've got a nice bit of negative space all of the way around, and now we can start to work the rosettes. Now, for this particular design, I'm going to, I want to make it arch around. Now I could start at the bottom, start in here with the new thread and come up. And I think that's actually what I'm going to do so that I keep it nice and tidy um, so that there isn't an excess knot along this center area. So I'm just going to attach the thread. It almost doesn't matter how you attach it to this central section when you're adding a new thread. I like, do like to work a couple of um, sort of sort of Tenerife knots. Um, obviously, when you're starting fresh, it doesn't always work. But just to give that a bit of security, I'm going to snip that end as well. Okay, so now I'm going to come up. And I'm not going to work any rosettes yet. All I want to do is get this um, thread lined up. So I'm going to go underneath that knot and that area. Okay. And this is just so that I can keep this thread lined up. Now I'm going to wrap around one of these bars. This isn't a such part of the rosette, but this will give for an interesting effect. Now I'm going to work the rosette. So the rosette basically comes around in a circle, okay? So in order to work one around an area such as this, the first thing that you have to do is you have to work your knots. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to work basic Tenerife knots. I'm going to work one on this single thread. And then I'm going to work one on each of the doubles 
I'll zoom in in a moment so that you can see where I've worked each of these paired threads and I'm sort of moving up a little bit so that I've got a bit of an arch because your rosettes need to have um, a foundation of a knot to wrap around otherwise they'll just slide around and then one on the single thread and then back down to the center bar now depending on I'll zoom in a little bit now so that you can see what I've done depending on the size of your medallion you can just flip it around as I've done here okay you could however place a knot here if you prefer um, that's entirely up to you so I'm going to move this back down so that it's back in regular focus and I'll do another row of the arch just so that you can see and then I will carry on and do the whole row trying to keep my fingers out of the way I'm trying to keep everything threaded on my needle I think what I'll do is that when it comes to the actual rosette I'll use a different um, colored thread so it may be a little easier for you to see because this is just the basic Tenerife knot that I'm doing right now and this helps to get your your shaping and again back to getting your negative space because that's really what lace all forms of lace are, are the it, it's the interaction between sort of the negative and the positive space so the thread and the gaps and then tuck that around that one and come up for the next and so I mean that would be pretty enough on its own anyways uh, I'll carry and I'll do this for all of the um, sections all the way around I've come full circle again now normally I prefer my rosettes the same color and so I would just carry on with the same thread to do the next section but of course I'm going to change it so that you can see but I think it would be nicer I'm just going to wrap that around and I think it would be nicer if I finish so therefore place my knots here at the center of this um, arched area it'll be more in keeping than having a knot in the center of this bar that goes around I'm just going to do a second knot just to make sure that that all holds tight and then I'll add on another piece of thread and to keep in with the whole theme of roses let's go for something a little darker No, hang on. I just went and got a much too thick weight. That's better. Nice if we stick to the same weight of thread, more or less. So I'm going to cut a long length. 
and add it on. And I think, again, I'm going to add it on at the center of one of these arches, just so that it keeps everything tidy. second knot for good measure and then hopefully you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing so I'm going to wrap around the bar. I'll just ignore that little thread end. need to get in with smaller scissors which I've left in the other room. And then I'm going to come up just as I did to work the knot on the arch. But instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and here it doesn't matter you can start over under it it doesn't matter. But I'm going to go over that I'm going under this thread, over the thread that's part of the arch, under the support thread, the original one again, along here, and then over and back under. And the next one can work again over the next section. So you basically weave under, over, under, over, under, so on, in a circle. Um, you will probably find that it helps to keep your... Um, the way that you're doing, the order that you're doing it, if you come all the way down and then work the next one in the opposite way so that you sort of are going so there's your your bars and so you can go sort of like this and then like this, and then like that. And that's effectively all you're doing. You don't have to be precise about which one you go over, which one you go under, or anything like that. It's just so that you get this flow of circles working around. So if it, it suits you to go like that, you can do that. Of course, you'll have a little bit more of a line there as opposed to in them coming up and down. But even then, that's all right, because what it is, is you're just filling out those areas to make circles. You can also go around them a few times. So you could go like so, and then a few times around. So you can make them as sort of full as you wish by working around. So I think the best thing for me to do is just to work some and hopefully, I know that it's small and the focus and everything, but hopefully you'll be able to get the gist of what I'm doing regardless, because I also have to move them, um, move the piece closer so that I can see as well um, around the whole camera sitting here on top. But because there isn't a lot of space because I'm using a thicker thread, then obviously I'm just going to do one row. Um, but that's also why I like to do um, the rosettes in the same color because 
you're less likely to see if there's any sort of directional changes or if you missed something um, because all you're doing as I say is it, it's there to fill out the area And then as I come around here, I'm going to come down and I've wrapped it a little bit, just basically to help keep the threads in line so that they don't end up, um, so that you don't end up with any large gaps. And then back up and work the next rosette. So each one is worked around a knot. I'd also like to point out something that some of you may have spotted and that's how this arch looks different to the arch before it and that's basically because which threads I chose to go around. So for this one I chose to go over on the back on the um, arch thread whereas here I chose to go under the arch thread it doesn't matter it matters more working um, in a second color because obviously you are going to see that difference on the other side there's going to be a slight difference too um, but if you're working in the same color you won't even notice that so I'm going to carry on working these and um, come back to you in just a moment Yet again, I've come full circle. I was going to correct the um, first section and I thought, well, if I do that, you're not going to see what the difference is. And I've bothered to do it in a different color. Um, so you can see the effect. So I left it in there. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around all of the um, this connecting bar underneath the arches and I'm not going to break into song just to thicken it up a bit again this is something that if you're using the same color thread it is obviously less obvious but it does then make a thicker line um, which can help to emphasize your design but I do think a lot of Although there is a whole tradition of doing um, colors in this type of lace um, in South America, I think doing a lot of it in the single colors is it's back to the, the negative and positive space. You see the pattern more clearly when it's a single color as opposed to when you've added in colors, you see the colors first and the pattern second. So it all depends on the look that you want to actually go for. So nearly through. I'm 
and I could not off there again um, but I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to take it under some of these threads it's choosing the right threads to take your thread under because for this instance I obviously want it to I want to go to the center to tie off into a knot but I don't want it to sort of go across any of the open spaces so I'm also going to just tack it here so that it can just sit at the correct side and then come around and knot the thread again I'll do this twice and do it more often than that if you want to now I seem to think that I've left my snips in the other room I don't think I have any here so I can snip the holding stitches for you So, just one moment, I'd best go and get the smaller set. Okay, so, as with all, we're just going to trim the holding stitches from the back of the loom. It always gets a little easier once you've cut a few. I'm going to also undo my, I just wrapped them around the holding stitches, my beginning stitches. And gently remove the medallion from the loom and remove the holding stitches before we go for the big reveal let's get these threaded through probably should do one at a time just want to thread those beginning stitches through to the front just as with any of the other um, any other medallion or Tenerife lace that you create you're always working on the back so you want these additional threads and this is additional threads because I uh, consistently use two shorter lengths when I was winding the initial um, web but that's all right it's easy enough to add the threads and it's easy enough to fasten them all off and we'll just tie these into a knot to secure them again this is all of the um, the basics of Tenerife lace I'm not doing anything different here. And I'm going to leave fairly long pieces on that at the moment. And there we have our reveal. Let's get it in focus. And so you can see that on the first um, set of rosettes where I wove 
under the um, upright, as it were, from the back, that gave more of a, probably more of a florally type thing at the front, though I missed one stitch uh, in the pattern. Whereas looking more circular at the back as I continued for the rest, actually fills out in a different way on the back. Now, as I said, this is not obvious even slightly really when you're working in a single color because it just basically thickens up the um, medallion. So if I put that on there, you might see it a little more easily. One medallion with an odd part, but you can see what, how the rosette stitch works, how knotting in an arch works as well, and the effect of the darned bar in this particular uh, design as well. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you found that informative and helpful and do please, you know, leave your comments what other bits that you might like to see and I'll try to keep working through this Tenerife Lace um, series. Do please hit subscribe, click like, share the video. It all helps the channel such a lot. Thank you. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye.